Yeah, hi folks. Now let me make this clear. I don't oppose New Zealand Loyal. In fact, I think they have some great policies. I really like the idea of uh, dumping the UN, for example. But how we get there without going bankrupt is another question. Now maybe if Donald Trump gets re-elected and takes the lead on it, which is quite probable, we may be able to do it. But I do have a serious problem with Liz Gunn herself. In her last announcement, I didn't see a leader. I saw a self-indulgent narcissist who is already cracking. I saw a waffling woman who can't handle pressure and criticism. And now she's playing the victim. I'm Liz Gunn, and this is a New Zealand loyal announcement that I promised I would make today. I'm still up in the far north. The people up here are absolutely wonderful. We had a full house in Kaitaia last night with delightful human beings, delightful Kiwis. In all of our lives, we come to, to a crossroads, a moment of meeting the crossroads where we actually have a choice in how we react and behave towards one another. Perhaps we have many of those crossroads and we've had them lately. We had them with the COVID policy rollout where we had to decide what we would be in terms of our inner moral code. I have left this message for a day or so because I, I wanted to see the crossroads that what has happened to New Zealand Loyal, what it would bring out in our Kiwis. As it turns out in Kaitaia, the people there were unconditionally supportive, absolutely understanding that something bigger than, um, than, than we could control is at play here. And I believe there is a silver lining to what has gone so wrong. What is she talking about? But online, I'm shocked to um, be told now, hour in, hour out, about some of the absolutely nasty stuff that is coming from people who have stood in this movement, which was for freedom and respect and human dignity, they have stood with nothing short of absolute bitchiness. And now, who is she talking about? And doesn't she know that criticism comes with the territory? And uh, naked nastiness towards New Zealand loyal at a time when we have had a major knock. What major knock? And I think that's a crossroads that's really important because it allows us as New Zealanders to ask, would we want those people in Parliament as our leaders? It also allows those people for the rest of their lives to say, wow, what was it I was willing to do for ephemeral fleeting power? And what, fame, money, a job, I don't know. I have no interest in any of those things when I stand for you, New Zealand, in politics, something I never, ever wanted to get into. The, the indignities and insults I've had to bear simply for doing something for my country, a country I love and a people that I mostly love, some of them I find repulsive, but mostly real Kiwis are just a beautiful nation still. There are some really dark ones here. And what are they dark from? Everyone who goes to that dark side is eaten with power and, and a lust for something. A lust for what? Fame? Projection. I've given some of those people wonderful interviews where I've satisfied their lusts for pain, for, for pain, my pain, for, for fame and for power. I've made them look really good and I've honoured them over and over. And yet here in my hour of need, they whip out their knives and, and seek to stab me in my back. Victim. But I will bear it and I will keep going until this election and I will now front up to what has happened because yesterday it was with the lawyer and when this happened and I had to pull my team in together on Saturday night and say front up to them of course straight away and say something has gone terribly wrong. I will tell you what has kept me at it is you the people of New Zealand combined with the quality the incredible 
fine human qualities of the New Zealand loyal team that I have pulled together. Everyone down to a man and a woman in that team in that painful meeting said on Saturday night, Liz, we are with you. Yes, we rise again and we keep going and we will pull off a miracle in this country that has never been seen in any country around the world. And I will tell you, as I talk to you now, how this miracle could possibly play out. In other words, for all our lives at the crossroads, when there is a disaster, pull from the jaws of disaster a triumph. Show New Zealand that this can be done. Didn't Ed Hillary have to do it probably multiple times as he was the first one to ascend Mount Everest? He must have had many times of self-doubt as he climbed. He must have had times he wondered, why am I doing this? And now she links herself to Edmund Hillary. Hillary. Now we're about five minutes in and we still don't know what she's talking about. He must have had times he thought, will I fail? Am I not good enough? All of that I can tell you to the brutes who want to see me hurting. If that gives you satisfaction, yes, I've had 48 hours of that. And the greatest agony of all is actually not for my own personal agony. I can live a simple, quiet life. The thing that brings this emotion is the thought of letting down the many, many Kiwis who come up to me at meetings and hug me and know that our little group, our brave little band of warriors, doing it all on a piece of number eight wire for you. We are real. Yeah, and now she deliberately stages crocodile tears to evoke sympathy. She is a trained performer who can cry at will, just like actors do. And that we stand with you and for you. And in fact, that we will really put ourselves on the line to bring across the line on October the 14th, a miracle that I cannot possibly yet tell you exactly the ways in which it will play out, but I have a very deep faith that it will. And faith is belief without evidence. And that's what I ask of you, New Zealand loyalists, New Zealand loyal supporters, the ones who every day get up and deliver more leaflets, put up more billboards, talk to more people about a 1% tax, and how it will free our people from the slavery and how we will be able to stand up to these brutes who are coming down from the World Economic Forum, from the UN, from the World Health Organization which, with their utterly benighted ideas that none of us wants, even those who are so nasty on our side, apparently do not want those ideas, yet they do not support a fellow freedom person when the, thing, when the going gets tough. My father had that saying, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And now she waffles on about her father again. New Zealand Loyal are showing you what we will be like when we are in Parliament, representing you and making the changes. All those people could have done the same vicious venality that we've seen from some of the other so-called freedom leaders. They did not. They were magnificent. They said, we'll double down on our work. We'll just work harder and we'll get past this. It is a human error, and I will tell you what happened. But she doesn't. But yes, that's where I wanted to begin, with the digital airways, which are, as we all now see, awash with theories about the situation in which we at New Zealand Oil now find ourselves. As always, as I've promised you, as I, as I will do right into the very last breath I take on this job, I will give you the facts and I will offer you the truth as I see it. On the creation of New Zealand Loyal, I asked you all, New Zealand, all of you who want a free country to honour our forebears and the children to come, I asked you to join me in a movement. I didn't know at the time, but it has now become a movement for and by the people. And that government of the people, by the people, for the people. And you joined me. And you still join me in a massive way. Well, from day one, we were under the pump. I was, I was aware of people like, you know, the, the Sean Plonker and all those other ones, Plunkett, just saying, oh, they'll never do it. They'll never do it. 
but together we have met every challenge and we have overcome every obstacle and we have met every deadline. I believe that because of the information that we've disseminated and the brave policy statements we've made, the truths we've talked about regarding the deep state and its apparatus, I absolutely believe we have received much extra attention by these powers that should not be. Now, after eight and a half minutes, she begins the reason for this video. All documents we had previously submitted to the Electoral Commission, interestingly enough, were always vigorously checked by the Electoral Commission. If there was an I not dotted or a T not crossed, well, we heard about it and we had to correct that before we could possibly advance further. And we did so. And you saw it. And you helped us. Remember the handwritten signatures that no other party had to go through? We didn't complain. We just did it. But we registered. As the party leader, it's absolutely my responsibility if something in this whole process goes wrong. And as always, I will own up to that responsibility. So what happened here was that we as a party elected the bulk nominations process. That's one in which all of the candidates, uh, their documentation goes in together in one pile, basically. These required documents were submitted close to the cutoff deadline, admittedly as were the supporting documents from the candidates demonstrating their preference to be both on the electorate and the party lists. So the individual nominations showed that. And then one of our team received contradictory advice from the Electoral Commission, which added very much to the confusion of that person who was working against the clock. I can't say much more about that without the evidence of those phone calls, and they need to be uh, legally kept by the Electoral Commission. I would like to look at how that contradictory advice may have caused or contributed to a human error that was, mis was mistakenly made, obviously. Whether that could ever amount to sabotage, one would not know without the evidence. Something has gone wrong that uh, at the very least, I can say, was not supportive at all from a body who are meant to support those who are applying to represent the people of New Zealand. I will leave that there. The upshot is that an administrative error on our part caused the party list to exclude all standing candidates. I had been up that morning until three in the morning working that list making sure every name was in just the right place, as if loving it, as if, as, if, as if it was my children. I really wanted to see that we would get in and have the right candidates by way of party vote. Uh, I need an aside now. I need to tell you at this point that Brenton Faithful, our candidate for Kaipara Ki Mahurangi, um, there were a couple of issues going on there. There was an issue of his document not being in in time, which was put right. There's an issue of him having an eye operation, which was also something we had to deal with. But basically, the main issue with Sprenton was because of the time constraints for the party to meet the deadline and the pressure we were under, we had difficulty locating another JP in the time we felt we needed to meet the deadlines. And Brenton ultimately committed a selfless act. Brenton Faithful withdrew as a candidate to sign the forms in his capacity as a justice of the peace for the party and the candidates. In his capacity as a justice of the peace, he, has un he is unable to sign for himself or for family members. Really, he single-handedly at that point saved New Zealand loyal from being unable to contest the general election. It was an act of a soldier in wartime. That's disgusting. It's nothing like an act of a soldier in wartime. 
in a way, throwing himself on his own sword. And for that, I am deeply grateful to you, Brenton, and you will forever be a personal and a professional friend of mine. He unfortunately, therefore, as with others, due to that administrative error, he too was omitted from the final list. He is and will always be a friend and an asset to New Zealand Loyal. His attention to detail, his knowledge, his organisational skills, his integrity in standing up when there were only three funeral directors around the world speaking out on what they were seeing will remain in the hearts of New Zealanders long past this election and the winning back of our country. Thank you, Brenton. I personally am somewhat surprised by the Electoral Commission considering their complete dedication to detail that we had seen earlier and their dedication to ensuring that everything matched up, which we saw when we went to register the party. I am personally surprised they did not at any point let our party secretary know that the bulk nomination forms did not reflect the supporting documentation which we had put in of the individual nominees saying they wanted to be party and list candidates. No, the candidate forms, they had both those preferences checked. So I have to ask how easy would it have been for the Electoral Commission to simply say, hey, is this right? Yeah, is that their job or your job? It could have been corrected and we would have been in. It wasn't corrected. It was left for us to find out well after the, the hard deadline they hold. That sits there and it could be something that is worthy of, again, some informed investigation after this election. However, at this point, it is absolutely right and proper that as leader of New Zealand Loyal, I assume full responsibility. Oh, that makes it all OK then. I wanted to save every cent I could of the monies we have coming in from the people of New Zealand for billboards, <coughs> for leaflets, for backup for our team, to teams of people to get going around the country. I have been parsimonious in extremis, very, very tight with spending of money on the administrative team. And I cannot thank these, these small, loyal bands of brothers and sisters around the country. I've kept them very small to very trustworthy people as well. I cannot thank them enough for all the nights they've done till three and four and even one last week, 6.30 in the morning. I didn't want to have a huge administrative team because I wanted trustworthiness above all else. I put one of our team in a position where they were under too much pressure and they should have had somebody else watching over their shoulder and helping them. It is fully my responsibility. And for those of you who wish to sink the knives in further, I give you this part of my body. Sink them in here if you want. You yeah, and now she's a martyr cannot hurt me any more than you already have done. And as you continue to be as nasty as you have been, you reveal to all New Zealanders the quality of you as human beings. I personally would want, not want you as my leaders going forward. I want a new kind of New Zealand. I want a New Zealand with decent and ethical people. I There's the sigh, folks. Deliberate, de deliberately designed to evoke sympathy for her. I want a New Zealand that we can be proud of and where those people in leadership show integrity. And there's one more thing. I have been so busy on so many fronts and so stretched, doing as much as I could in such a short time to pull off a miracle, that I think I overlooked the importance of having everything tied up well ahead of that deadline. From my law training years ago, I was always able to pull off miracles the night before a court case. And this one, yes, we all worked through the night, 
But in hindsight, my other failing is, I believe we should have had everything ready well before the due time. So there again, mea culpa, and for that, I'm sorry, I feel I've failed you. However, I am asking all New Zealand loyal supporters to stick with us because I believe all of this will work together for the good. I know other parties are rubbing their hands, as I've said. They seem to have some kind of brutal glee. They're trumpeting their opinions anywhere they can get an audience to dissuade you from voting for New Zealand loyal. But I want you to know this, New Zealand, they are laughing at me, yes, but they are laughing at you. Yes, I have owned the mistakes. But the way these miscreants take this gleeful pride in you, being denied of full representation, is to me a very ugly part of them, and I want you to think about that. These trolls have never actually achieved anything substantial in their own lives. But what do they do? They litter the pages of as many groups as they can and they show us the darkness that is afoot in our country. They're angry because no one who is truly standing up for you and determined to decentralize everything back into your control will join their various umbrellas or parties. Why should you have your futures negotiated away through deals and accommodations or appeasement? or anything that can take us to that level of mediocrity that results in, in, in such brutal behavior right now. Why wouldn't you be entitled to your own party and a party that is loyal to you and not to them? And I don't just mean the globalists. So I say this, right now and in the last few days, I've had moments just lie down and be defeated. You failed, you're a failure, Liz. But this part of me that won't sleep rose up every time and it said rise up and fight knock down seven times get up eight what did our forebears have to do in the war no matter how tough the day how long the night ah she's truly disgusting now she's a soldier how brutal the injuries how hard the experience they were going through in life. They used it to forge their character, to steal their spine, to find something in them yet again they did not know they had as, as they built the characters of fine Kiwis. And we are of that stock. There is one thing you can know beyond all else, New Zealand loyal will never ever betray the trust of Kiwis. We will make mistakes. I'm human and I'm doing this under under a pressure I have never known, and yet every day something gets me up and finds the energy in me to serve this country and to give it all I've got. And ultimately, I see it in the people who are on, for example, the New Zealand Loyal Telegram page from Southland. It's a delight. I love looking at it every day. It just brings me such joy. It's full of real Kiwis serving their community, knowing to their core that this New Zealand Loyal is their party. It's our party, it's your party. It belongs to all of us. I'm not in it for anything <coughs> other than to win our country back and to see the New Zealand people step back into the power and the integrity and the goodness that we used to have such pride in before all this bitchiness and this simpering venality was was marked out as okay online. It's not okay, and it's certainly not what we want in leadership. No, our vision at New Zealand Loyal is very simple. You, the people, will be restored to the power you've actually always had. It was a ruse to take your power away. We just fell for a con. What we want to do, actually, is do away with the party system entirely. And instead of that, we would love direct representation with a right of recall so that it doesn't take years to get rid of someone who's not performing, who's just a nasty, cruel, unkind person who does not care about anything other than their own power and ego. No, those people need to go. And you should have a say in that. We want a future where you decide through binding people's referenda. Yeah, new, uh, new conservative policy. We want a future where the rights and freedoms of each of us are respected, are enshrined in law, 
And that means a constitution that will hold those rights and freedoms inviolate. If you seriously want to know why they fear us and you, the people, and of course, by extension, New Zealand Loyal, because we stand for you, then go to nzloyal.org.nz and start watching the videos. Start with the New Zealand Loyal Policy Overview and then each subsequent video announcement and you will see why the deep state and the other parties fear us all so much. They can say their mind-numbing, generalised statements that mean very little. We are specific, we are brave, and we are telling you exactly what we will do when we get in to represent you. We want you all to get all your New Zealand loyal electorate candidates over the line now in New Zealand. It was impossible when I started this party. People said you'll never get it registered, and yet we did it. So again, we need to get the candidates over the line. That is going to take an army of volunteers. So it's taken her 23 minutes to explain what her stuff up actually means. The rest of it was about her. She is a complete narcissist, folks. And this means New Zealand Loyal doesn't have a dog show of getting anywhere. Now to a real leader who has actually put his life on the line for New Zealanders. He has done more for New Zealand in three months than Liz can do in a lifetime. Now this is from Christchurch a few days ago, and I think the guy speaking is Martin Dotre, the uh, historian. So again, things are a wee bit heated here. Uh, we've had a discussion with one of the local police and uh, he's busy trying to pull us away and to disperse, but that's not what we're here to do. We're here to get a message across. They've got a job to do. We've got an unruly part of the population who've, who've got extreme uh, racist views. That's, that's their right, but uh, at this stage they're well behaved. Uh, uh, but the concern of the New Zealand police is that they won't be able to contain themselves long enough. Honor! The treaty! Honor! The treaty! Honor! The treaty! are probably on the government payroll, as we saw in Wellington. Um, nothing new about that, I suppose. Um, but it is another very interesting piece of history uh, for New Zealand, a country that was once uh, united, that's been divided by a, cr a criminal government, uh, that's now a corporation, a corporation that now owns the police and controls the New Zealand police. The court says at the same time they make decisions which favour the government rather than that of democracy. Um, an outstanding effort here today from people who want us to be one people. And a great effort. From Julian Batchelor who's been courageous throughout New Zealand, the work that he's done uh, without a great deal of support from the New Zealand police. Um, particularly in the North Island. He's had great response here in the South Island, uh, been welcomed. Um, I think in the South Island here we know what it's like to be united and we don't want uh, the racist division that's uh, obviously become a very big part of the Upper North Island. So well done to Julian Batchelor. Um, well done to the group here today in support of the Stop Co-Governance um, effort. And... Uh, well behaved, great turnout, great messages. And then on the other side here, we've got unfortunately people that have been indoctrinated by, by a criminal government and a criminal media. And I mean, we only have to look at the lady that's speaking here at the moment. I don't think she's ever done a good day's work in her life. 
Um, no, no. But here's what we need to say. I'd say that we'll, we'll be on, on women's um, income support um, and obviously looking for Look at other benefits uh, beyond, beyond the women's workers. Looks like we're about to move on. I've seen um, another thing observation here. favour there moving on from the, the face to face I guess you could call it but I think it did its uh, did its job um, so, uh, and getting the message out there to the public who I know we've got a 99% support of here in Christchurch um, which is wonderful in itself but as we know in Wellington and the protest in Wellington we had government um, employees on the other side of the uh, cordoned off area, or particularly on the day uh, that uh, a thousand members of the New Zealand Police Force moved in and destroyed um, this once democratic country. So uh, this is an extension of, of uh, March last year, um, as we know that the government is moving towards uh, division, uh, take, take us away from the, the threat of the UN agenda, knowledge of it and the effect it will ultimately have the fabric of our country so um, again a credit to the people here today because it's not a great job coming out and, and being counted if you like in public but uh, again Julian Batch an extremely brave effort um, to have been doing what he's been doing the last two months um, at, at significant personal cost to himself so um, I'll just move in here and we'll just see what he has to say or some other position in the government department and they come after you but I am so proud of you because look at you you came out and you took the, the step you overcame fear which is what you've got to do I've had to overcome fear and you did it today and you know what we beat the, the, the narrative because we had Derek where's Derek? Derek my friend here Derek we beat the narrative because they will not like seeing a Maori and a Pakeha working, walking together down the street saying honour the treaty. Yeah, now folks, I'll leave it there today. And, uh, and folks, I've posted all the relevant links below.